Hello everyone, welcome to my channel ASP.NET Core and today I'm going to teach you how do you handle concurrency in RESTful API. You know that uh, RESTful API, uh, RESTful API, I mean to say that uh, representational state transfer uh, that is that an architectural style on the basis of architectural style web services that is RESTful APIs. And just I'm going to, uh, that is uh, already defined set of rules that is based on the RESTful APIs. So the concurrency is also a matter in this, uh, if you are, if you uh, have a large websites. Concurrency is an important consideration when developing RESTful APIs as multiple client may attempt to access and modify the same resource simultaneously. Here are the some common technique for handling concurrency in RESTful APIs. The first uh, that is optimistic concurrency control. This technique involves adding a version number or timestamp to each resources and use using it to de uh, detect conflicts. When multiple clients attempt to modify the same resources, when a client retrieves a resources, the version number or timestamp is included in the response. When the client send an update request, the version number or uh, timestamp is also included in the request. If the resource has been modified by another client in the meantime, the server can't can reject the update and return an error message. So here we have an example and let's understand that example. Here you can see that the product uh, model uh, have a version number uh, with the concurrency check attribute. Okay. So now when a client requests to put or you can say that update that product information, you can see that a put method attempts to save the update product to the database. You can see that if the update fails to concurrency conflicts in the exception, a DB update concurrency exception is thrown looking like that. Okay. So uh, the exception contain an entry object in the right side. You can see that we have an entry object that represent the database record that cause the conflict. So ex.entries.single by using that you can get the database uh, conflicts, uh, cause that conflicts. The method retrieve the current database values for the record and compare the version number in the client update request to the version number in the database. If the version number do not match, a conflict response is returned. Otherwise, the exception is rethrown to be handled for the global exception handler. By implementing optimistic concurrency control in your ASP.NET Core Web API, you can uh, ensure that multiple clients can access and modify resource simultaneously. While minimize that risk of conflicts, the data is inconsistent like that. So the second one is the pessimistic concurrency control. Pessimistic concurrency control, uh, this technique involves looking at resource when a client begins modifying it. And preventing other client from modifying it until the first client is finished this can be implemented using database log or application level logs however this approach can lead to decreased scalability and performance as it can result is long wait time for client that are attempting to access the log result so here we have a log uh, attribute in the model you can see and the next one in the example you can see here we have a lock feature. So uh, that example have a lock method set the lock property of the product to true like that and save it to the database. The put method checks again. You can see that that is the put method check if the product is already logged by the another client. If it is a logged response is returned inside it here. You can say that return logged. Otherwise, the method update the existing product with the new values and save it to the database. Okay, so that is the uh, example of pessimistic concurrency control. The next one is the partial updates. This technique involves allowing clients to update only a subset of the resource rather than entire resource. This can reduce the likelihood of conflicts as multiple clients may be able to modify different parts of the resources simultaneously. However, it can also lead to more complex code and may not be appropriate for the scenarios. So here you can see that the patch method accept a JSON patch document as input 
which describes the changes to be made to the resources. The method retrieves the existing resources from the database, applies the changes specified in the patch document and save the updated resources to the database. So like that. The next one and the final method that is retry mechanism. Retry mechanism, this technique involves providing client with the mechanism for retrying failed request. If a client receives a response indicating that a request has failed due to a concurrency conflicts, the client can retry the request after waiting for a short period of time. And here we have an example. The put method attempt to save updates. Okay. So you can see that uh, the put method, you can uh, in, the, um, in the left side, attempt to save the update product to the database. If the update fails due to concurrency conflicts, a DB update concurrency exception that is in the right side, you can see is caught and the method wait for a short period of time before attempting to save the period again, product again. The method continues to retry the operation until it is successful. Okay, so that is the retry method. Okay, so here you can say that task dot delay we have 500 uh, milliseconds you can say. So client check version also um, check the server version also. So database dot product dot version product dot version etc. So thank you guys for watching this video and keep watching all of the videos which is related to ASP.NET Core. And please don't forget please subscribe my channel because you learn lot of things uh, from this channel. Thank you very much for watching.